thanks, Goose. The king is dead. Long live the king! Chariot is a 2D platformer with an interesting and slightly morbid twist. The king has sadly passed away, but his ghost remains. Yes, his ethereal presence has one last request before it can move on. For his body to be buried deep amongst the labyrinth of the royal catacombs. He's a bit of a rude king, don't you think? You call this a sepulchre worthy of my majesty? Oh, I liked his attitude. A king demands respect, Barjo. Uh, but yes, this king has a lot of snark for someone who needs a favour, particularly one in a coffin with wheels. Uh, not a coffin, Darren. A chariot. The task is left to the princess and her fiancé to roll the king to his final resting place. And this is where the platforming comes into play, as you attempt to navigate the maze and find a suitable sepulchre. As well as impressive upper body strength, the princess and her companion are each equipped with a rope. The rope can be hooked to the front or rear axle of the chariot to hoist it up ledges or over tricky gaps, all the while grabbing gems to appease the king. There are some interesting level mechanics too, like the life and ethereal rails. The life tracks can only be walked on by the living, where the cart just rolls right on through, and vice versa for the ethereal tracks. As you travel deeper into the catacombs, you uncover new zones to explore. Each of these has a new environmental element for you to tackle, such as darkness or ice. Along with gems, you'll also be collecting blueprints. You use these to upgrade the chariot so that it can access the new areas. I should get... Oh, give it up. I can't get any traction here. Pull me back and you'll find some better wheels. The blueprints also let you unlock nifty equipment to help you navigate the catacombs. You can slow time, or use a peg to hold the chariot in place, or even use distractions against the game's enemies, the looters! <laughs> ah, the looters, they're always after your trinkets. They react to noises such as when the cart bangs against walls or when you grab those clinking, clattering jewels. Once they're after you, they're relentless. You can fight back, though. The princess has a sword, and the fiancé has a slingshot to hold the beasts at bay. Once you complete a mission, you'll have the option to replay it in speedrun mode. Completing a speedrun gains you some extra gems, but also puts your name on the online leaderboards so you can challenge your friends. It's always nice to have some friendly competition. Well, yes, but this game's focus is more on teamwork with the game's drop-in, drop-out co-op. There are treasures within each zone which are unattainable without some clever cooperative play. Yes, and playing solo, particularly in the later levels, can be frustrating as the gameplay gets more frantic. It's still a fun experience, but the game is certainly at its best when you have a buddy on board. I quite enjoyed my time with Chariot, though. It's got some unique features that make it stand out, and it's one of the few arcade games that are actually on the new console, so I think it's worth a play. I'm giving it 7.5 out of 10 rubber chickens. I thought it had a good difficulty progression, and the game is constantly throwing new ideas and tools your way, so I'm giving it 8 out of 10. All right, now it's time for another episode of my sitcom, Totally Incompatible! Oh, roll the tape, Kerry. 